Hi, my name is Togogo Alltrade, and the following is a collaboration between my YouTube channel, Cold Fusion, and the ABC. Generative AI art is a rapidly growing field that's raising some important questions about the intersection of technology, creativity, and even copyright law. You've probably all seen the images online of anything that you can imagine, from the Pope playing basketball to Trump being arrested. The question of what artists should do in the wake of this technology has become a hot topic of debate. The legality of this technology is also still up in the air. In the final episode of this ABC special on AI, we'll take a look. Today, there are many AI tools for the visual arts. Here are some of the best in the industry. Midjourney is a generative AI program that generates images from natural language descriptions. It's currently in open beta and users can create artwork in Discord by using prompts. A prompt is basically a short description of what a user wants. The service has only been publicly available since July 2022, but has risen to become far and away the most popular AI image generator. The most recent development in visual AI art is video generation. It's proven to be particularly difficult and hard to get correct, but the best tool available at the time of writing is Runway ML. The latest version, Gen 2, can create a short video clip only from a short text description from a user. The outputs aren't photorealistic yet, but in the next few months, the results are sure to improve. Wonder Dynamics is the most impressive generative AI tool out there. Its purpose is to replace a real live action actor with its CGI equivalent. It can remove hours, days, or even months of work, making the life of a visual effects artist much easier. It does so by automatically separating the background, the foreground, setting the lighting, and rigging the virtual skeleton of a character, and much more. The result is a computer-generated character that blends into its environment. Interestingly, the tool was co-founded by actor Ty Cayley Sheridan at just 24 years old. These kinds of AI systems are becoming more mainstream, with large creative industry titans such as Adobe integrating AI features into their software. Adobe Premiere Pro after Effects and even Photoshop have been refitted with AI tools. Google has also incorporated AI into its photo tools for mobile. You can seamlessly move objects and remove unwanted things or people in the background. It raises some questions of the consequences of such widespread and easily accessible image manipulation. Without the need for even Photoshop, can we trust even the most casual of photos? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, let's take a look at how these systems work. This will have a large part to add towards the discussions later. These AI systems work by being trained on existing datasets of images. After the training process, an AI system can learn the patterns of what makes a good picture, learn the styles of artists, and understand the positioning and context of any object in a scene. The most pressing issue for artists is that their style of art, usually developed over many years, has been used in the training data, often without permission. There have been clear examples of an artist's name and style being referenced within the prompts of Midjourney. This has resulted in accusations of plagiarism and the devaluation of original works. This creates a complex legal landscape and there's no clear consensus or established law on how to handle AI-generated works and copyright protection. And this poses a significant challenge for companies and individuals seeking to protect their works in different regions of the world. Despite the controversies, AI art is only getting more popular. Recently, an AI-generated image won the prestigious Sony Photography Award. This caused a stir through the internet and caused many to wonder what areas of the arts are not going to be affected by AI. The debate over AI-generated works and copyright protection is ongoing, with different jurisdictions having different standards for determining originality and creativity. According to the University of South Australia, quote, works are afforded copyright protection in Australia if the author is a human who has contributed independent intellectual effort. They go on. The author is human, AI tools do not currently have legal status and cannot own copyright. Similarly, the UK and Ireland have specific provisions for computer-generated works, while France and Germany require human authorship. This complexity highlights the need for a nuanced and thoughtful approach to balance the interests of creators, users, and the public at large. Ultimately, AI-generated artwork is a fascinating and complex phenomenon that poses both opportunities and challenges for artists and society. As humans, our anthropocentric bias may play a key role in how we evaluate AI-made works. 
especially when it's about creative expression. Creativity has always been our ground, but this new frontier invites us to rethink our assumptions and expectations of art. For the artists, there's two ways of going about solving this. One, invent a mechanism for artists to get compensated. For example, a paid app like Midjourney should pay back a percentage of the profits to an artist in the same proportion that their work was used in a final generated image. On the other hand, this may be quite hard to implement. The second way has been demonstrated by Adobe. Their image generation tools are trained on stock images like Shutterstock, so users can be confident that there's no legal issues. The downside is that the resulting images usually are much less interesting. Let's see what some Australian artists have to think about this. But Dali is a whole new way to make that art that I never thought I'd ever see. The way I see it, Dali could make or break the art world. However, that's completely up to the individual. I mean, we could run through the streets in panic and protest for our jobs, or just decide to give up on creating art altogether. The second school of thought, I think is the one I'd prefer to take, and that's the integration. AI concerns are understandable. I got a lot of empathy because 99% of what we've been doing for the last 10 to 20 years seems to be exactly what AI is good at. Technical skill sets, like creating a basic form and then rendering it very, very, very well. That other 1% skill, creating a compelling, unique story, that's the one that a lot of us have neglected, myself included, because technical skills are what the market has demanded thus far. And now we're finding out in 2022 that that's the one that we'll probably need for the future. So essentially, this feels like we are starting our career over again. The time investment that we've made learning these new skills, sometimes over several decades now, feels lost. And you can find screenshots of AI artists relishing this fact, which definitely pisses me and a lot of people off. But do remember that social media will always, you can always depend on it, promoting the worst in humanity. And you'll find one of these people in every community. In this series, we've seen how AI is having far-reaching implications in healthcare, education, and the arts. Never in my life have I seen a technology explode so fast. And that's saying something, because I've been tracking the progress of AI since 2015. In those days, AI was only doing obscure research tasks, like playing games and figuring out logic puzzles. But in 2022, with ChatGPT and DALI, the game changed. And since then, the floodgates have been opened. It's democratized a lot of specialized skills. Experts can now be more efficient. And in general, it can remove a lot of the repetitive cognitive labor for some. But what happens as it keeps improving? How many will be left behind? Will there be even more jobs created by AI? Or is it going to keep on encroaching on the areas that were thought to be purely human tasks? Nobody knows, and it's impossible to know what a future would look like as humans coexist with AI. But one thing is for sure, it's going to be interesting. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the next episode in the series, you can find it in the description below.